It is official. The New England Patriots will face off against the Seattle Seahawks for Super Bowl 49. Today, the Seahawks beat out the Green Bay Packers in a dramatic comeback in overtime with a final score of 28 to 22. And Tom Brady and the Patriots, well, they defeated the Indianapolis Colts easily 45 to 7. We'll have all those full highlights coming up in sports. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Luke Lennon. And I'm Ashley Rodriguez. This week marks the 42nd anniversary of the historic Roe versus Wade decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. The 7-2 ruling affirmed a woman's right to have an abortion under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. And today, thousands of local Catholics marched to honor their right to be pro-life. ABC 7's Pilar Arias joins us live with details about the celebration of life. Pilar. And Storm Track Weather Now, you are taking a live look from our ABC 7 weather deck. Another beautiful Sunday, hardly a cloud in the sky. Meteorologist Carla Welga is in the weather lab with your first forecast. And Carla, it was another near perfect day. So it's not quite time to get that car washed. Okay, thank you, Carla. Tonight on ABC 7 Extra, Congressman Steve Pierce joins Maria Garcia for an in depth discussion. Host Maria Garcia is live now with a preview. Maria. Yeah, thank you. We're looking forward to the show. Drivers, be ready. Another traffic headache is coming your way. A portion of I-10 will be closed later tonight. Starting at 8 p.m., I-10 East between the Yarborough and Overpass and Loma Land Overpass will be closed. The city of Las Cruces wants to improve its services by getting feedback from those who know the city best, its residents. ABC 7's Joseph Tagon explains. And check out this amazing story. That's a pickup truck sandwiched between two semi trucks. This accident was part of a 26 vehicle pileup in Oregon last night. 27 year old Caleb Whitby was driving when he smashed into the back of a jackknife semi truck, flipping his pickup over. That's when another tractor trailer came right at him. Whitby says he closed his eyes, held onto his steering wheel, and prayed as the second semi slammed into his truck. Amazingly, he was able to walk away from the crash. With just a bruise and a few scratches, just just a band-aid. That's incredible. Although Remarkable. I'm sure he's going to have nightmares. Uh, that's traumatic. I'm sure a car coming right at you. Wow, oh, right? The Secret Service and the FBI are investigating shots fired near Vice President Joe Biden's home in Delaware. It happened Saturday night, just before 8:30. A Secret Service spokesman says a vehicle sped past the home and fired multiple shots. The spokesman says the vehicle was on a public road outside the established security perimeter. He says the home is several hundred yards away from the road. Biden was expected to spend the weekend in Delaware, but he and his wife were not at the home when the shooting happened. They had been briefed on the incident. Tonight, a family is looking for answers, and they need your help. The Galvin family tells ABC7 last summer, 34-year-old Lorenzo Francisco Galvin Jr. was found on the railroad tracks dead. It happened in the lower valley near Presa and Roseway. The family says police still have not discovered what happened and now consider Galvin's death a cold case. Galvin leaves behind five children. If you have any information, please contact authorities. In honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, people collected food today to support those in need citywide. This is the city's 15th annual MLK food drive. The food goes to the Salvation Army, the Opportunity Center, Rescue Mission, and others. And a storm track weather now. We are taking a live look from our ABC7 mountain cam. Carla, the cold isn't too chilling tonight, but you're tracking a warmer than usual Martin Luther King Day tomorrow, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, definitely. 